Karen McGraw, and I'm here to show you some of the scientific demonstrations we do during the assemblies. Now, the first day is all about gravity, and this is our very first demonstration of gravity. Ready? That was it. The ball dropped. Gravity. Now, I'm going to have my friend Brenda come in, and she's going to help me with some more gravity demonstrations. Now, first thing, Brenda, I'm going to need you to take off your shoe. So if you could remove your boot. Great. Okay. Now, Brenda, I have here a piece of paper and a boot. Which one do you think is going to hit the ground first? My boots. Think so? Well, let's let's try it. This is what we do. We, we get a question, we answer it. Let's see what happens. Looks like you were right. Looks like the boot dropped first. The paper kind of flew around. Now, the reason that happened is because the shape of the paper, air was pushing up on it as much as gravity was pushing down on it. And that's why it kind of flew around a little. So, Brenda, if you would just crumble that up into a ball for me. Okay. Now, which one do you think is going to fall first? Uh, as you know, the boot is much heavier than the piece of paper, and it flew around the last time. What do you think is going to happen this time? The boot. Okay, well, let's see. Now, as you see, they dropped it exactly the same time. The reason for that is once you make air resistance isn't an issue, then no matter how heavy or light an object is, they're going to drop at the same time because Gravity is going to pull things towards the center of the Earth. The boot is heavier, but the smaller object can move faster, so they drop at the same time. Isn't gravity awesome? I feel like I should have known that. It's, well, I have one more thing I want you to do, Miss Brenda. If you would stand next to me, I'll give you your boot in a second. But right now, just bend over and grab your toes. Okay. Now, no, touch them. Grab them, grab them, just like okay. that. There you go. Now what I want you to do is, without letting go of your toes, I want you to jump forward. Oh gosh. <laughs> go ahead and try. Jump, jump as far as you can. <laughs> That's fine. That's exactly right. You can't really do it because people have a moving center of gravity. And if you restrict it, suddenly you can't move at all. So God really knew what he was doing when he created this world and he made gravity to keep us from floating off into space. Hi, it's Karen, and I'm here to tell you about the Session 2 Assemblies Demonstration, which is all about cause and effect. So what I'm going to do is well, I'm going to turn on the hair dryer, and then I'm going to use a ping pong ball. And here we go. No matter where you move it, the ping pong ball will follow. You can even tip it a little to the side, and then to this side, and the ping pong ball will stay where it is. That's this because the air moving around the ball pushes less on the ball. So basically, the air pushing on the ball is the same as gravity. And the effect is that the ping pong ball just hovers in space. Now let's take it up a notch. Get it to yourself a leaf blower and a beach ball. Take that part off. Now we're going to turn it on, so I'm going to stop talking. Now you need a roll of toilet paper and a dowel. Make sure there's a little bit of paper trail there. Here we go. Now that you have an empty toilet paper tube, one more thing you can do. There we go. How much fun is that? <laughs> and now we're talking about session three and the laws of motion. And the first thing we're going to do to demonstrate motion is blow up this balloon. All right, now what happens when you let go? That's right, it flies off. Well, the reason it does that is because the air escaping the balloon pushes against the air that is all around us, and that causes the balloon itself to shoot off. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about this and about objects at rest, wanting to stay at rest, and we're going to do that with this little foam ball and a wiffle bat. Now, I'm going to ask my lovely friend Brenda to come in here one more time, 
And Brenda, what I want you to do is put your hand right in front of that, that ball. Okay, I'll try not to hit you. All right, and I'm going to hit the ball and we're gonna see what happens. Nothing happened. Thank you, Brenda. You did that very well. The reason the ball didn't move is because the force I was applying to the object was met with an equal force stopping it. But without that force, of course, what will happen is, okay, so what about uh, something like a bowling ball? Let's see what happens when I smack this one really good. Okay, ready? It didn't move at all. Well, the reason for that is there's a lot more mass in a bowling ball and it takes a lot more force than you can get with this wiffle bat. So there you have it, the law of motion. Hey, it's Karen and we're here at session four and we're talking about transformations today. So the first thing you're going to need is an empty water bottle, a balloon, some vinegar, and some baking soda. Now stretch the balloon a few times like you're gonna blow it up, but what we're going to do instead is place a funnel over the opening and we're gonna add a tablespoon of baking soda into the balloon. We're going to put some vinegar into the water bottle. Okay. Now, making sure to keep the baking soda in the bottom of the balloon, place the balloon over the water bottle. Lift the balloon and shake the baking soda into the vinegar. Watch what happens. There it goes. There we go. What's happening is, <laughs> what's happening is that the baking soda is a base that reacts with the vinegar the acidity of the vinegar and creates carbon dioxide gas and as you see the more the gas you get the bigger the balloon gets now what we're going to do is we're going to use some of our super special ingredient here also known as dry ice now you may need a hammer to break it into smaller pieces you can do that before your assembly begins but make sure that you use tongs or heavy gloves to handle the dry ice so what we're going to do, I'm going to take a piece and I'm going to add it to this container of colored water. That's all it is. And as you can see, the dry ice, which is frozen carbon dioxide, transforms the carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. And it forms this really, really cool cloud. Now this cloud is completely safe. Kids can play in it, they can blow on it, it's completely safe. And now we're gonna have a little more fun with the same idea, but this time we're gonna add just the teeniest little bit of dishwashing liquid. You just need a little squirt. This time, when you add the dry ice, watch what happens. It creates bubbles because the dishwashing liquid traps the carbon dioxide gas and the water vapor, and it makes all these really, really cool bubbles. So there you have it, transformations, and it's pretty cool. And now we're in session five, and we're talking about chain reactions. Now for this demonstration, you're going to need ping pong balls and mouse traps, and a lot more than I have right here. But I'm just gonna show you how you wanna set it up. Now very carefully, you're going to set the mouse trap. All right. Now once the trap is set, you're going to put it down, and we're going to place a ping pong ball carefully on the trap. Now, once you have the ball carefully placed on the trap, at the beginning of the assembly skate, you're going to shoot a few of them off into the audience by throwing another ping pong ball at it. So do that a couple of times, let the kids keep the ping pong balls. But beforehand, you're gonna set up the big one, you're gonna have a big chain reaction, and take a look at what that looks like.